Bees and wasps are probably our most familiar insects. They visit our gardens from spring to autumn. We love bees, but we hate wasps. And we don't really know much about hornets because we don't see them very often. All we know is that they're bigger and scarier than wasps. What we fail to understand is just how important they all are. Not just bees, wasps and hornets too. Hi everyone, welcome to Animal Educate. My name's Abby and today we're going to talk about bees, wasps and hornets. Both bees and wasps are classified in the order Hymenoptera along with ants. The order Hymenoptera is a vast group of insects that contains at least 198,000 species in 91 families. Ecologically, these insects are of tremendous importance in acting as predators, parasites, pollinators or scavengers. The social Hymenoptera are the most advanced insects on Earth. Bees are really easy to spot because of their golden colouring and their tiny furry hairs all over their bodies. This makes them appear fuzzy and fluffy and cute. Honeybees and bumblebees are social insects, living in complex colonies. This consists of a queen, males and sterile female workers. Most females have a venomous sting and a basket to carry the pollen on their hind legs. The honeybee has very short hair, they're black or brown, intermixed with amber. The queen ranges between 1.6 to 1.8 centimetres, while the worker bees will range between 1.2 centimetres and 1.4 centimetres. They eat the nectar from flowers, they're very gentle natured, and they'll die after stinging. They swarm in the spring and the summer and they live in hollow trees or chimneys, wall cavities or roof spaces. A honeybee has a colony with a strict division of labour. The queen will lay all the colony's eggs while the workers gather food and tend to the larva. Only the queen bee and the drones have a fully developed reproductive system. The queen is fertilised by a drone. The queen bee lays two kinds of eggs the fertilised and non-fertilised. The non-fertilised eggs will develop into drones, while the fertilised will grow into female individuals. The female individuals can develop into queens or workers, depending on their nutrition during their larva stage. Larva that grows to become queen bees are fed exclusively with copious amounts of royal jelly. And this is during the entire nourishment period. The larvae that develop into workers, during the first three days, they're fed with very small amounts of royal jelly and the rest of the days with royal jelly, pollen and honey. This determination is called caste determination. There's thought to be more than 100,000 different types of wasps and new species are still being discovered. Most species of wasps are solitary, but because solitary wasps don't sting, most humans are more familiar with social wasps. Around 900 species of the world's social wasps live in highly organised societies, consisting almost entirely of females. During the summer, worker wasps emerge and the colony begins to grow to as large as 25,000 individuals. In the fall, colonies will begin to decline. This is when male workers will start to die and the queens leave their nest to search for places to hibernate. Only female wasps can sting. Males don't have the egg-laying ovipositia modified into a stinger on the female insects. They like lofts, they like attics, they like wall cavities, hollow trees, bushes. Wasps are carnivores and use their stingers to kill and lay their eggs inside prey. They make their nests out of small pieces of wood, they chew this wood to a pulp, then they spit it out so they can then build their walls with it. 
it forms a texture very similar to paper. The majority of wasps live one year or less. The worker wasps generally exist for several months, while the queen wasps, they can survive for years. The wasps, they don't migrate. If temperatures drop, most wasps will become dormant until the weather improves. Social wasps have the ability to live longer than the solitary wasps, and this is because of their pack power when in danger. Social wasps in trouble emit a pheromone that calls to nearby colony members. The result can be a stinging attack by hundreds of thousands even of wasps. Hornets are a specific type of wasp and they're usually a little rounder and fatter than the common wasp. Although they nest in the same way, hornets are known to be less aggressive than wasps, if unprovoked. Hornet stings are also more painful to humans than typical wasp stings and this is because of the chemicals found in the hornet. Individual hornets can sting repeatedly. Hornets appear very similar to the common wasp. They're larger and they're coloured chestnut brown rather than black. They're the largest of the British social wasps and they build papery nests in hollow trees. The hornet's life cycle is very similar to that of the common wasp. Newly mated queens hibernate during the winter. Then they emerge in the spring to begin building a nest. They lay eggs that hatch into sterile female workers. They then take over nest building. They collect food for developing the larva. Later in the summer, males and fertile females will hatch. These mates and the females become next year's queens. The hornets have an unwarranted fearsome reputation, but will only sting humans if attacked. Both adults and larvae eat mainly insects. Adults may also take spiders and queens may supplement their diet with tree sap and windfall fruit. They also stock up on nectar before hibernating. We rely on bees to pollinate our food as well as the many flowering plants we grow for all sorts of uses. In the wild, bees play an essential role in keeping our natural lands healthy. While many insects pollinate flowers, none are as efficient and effective at the task as bees. Wasps like bees are powerful pollinators, but unlike bees, wasps are also apex predators. In recent years, bee populations have been declining globally. Increased rates of colony collapse disorder, climate change, and other factors have contributed. These changes have sparked fear that bees may go extinct, leaving us without essential pollination services. The diversity and evolution of insects likely played a major role in the evolution of flowering plants. We could lose this diversity that's been developing over hundreds of millions of years. What can we do to help bees, wasps and hornets? We can plant through the seasons and choose bee and wasp friendly plants. Many plants are bee friendly, from herbs to larger shrubs and trees. Check out the links in the description. Let your grass grow longer. This provides pollinators shelter and a place to feed. You could also create a mini wildflower meadow or you could provide habitat a small wood pile. Lay off the pesticides. Bee harming pesticides and herbicides are implicated in bee decline. There's many alternatives out there and it just means a bit of effort and a bit of research. Use peat free compost to save wildlife habitat. Help keep our threatened peat bogs intact. There's many good alternatives out there. Keep Keep a water supply in your garden. Don't kill them. If they're bothering you, just move away from them. Educate yourself and others about bee and wasp conservation. 
If there's anything that you want to contribute today, please do comment below. Any questions or let us know what other animal you would like us to cover. We always really want your feedback. We want to hear from you. If you've enjoyed today's episode, please, please do give us a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching guys. Until next time.